there have recently been some disturbing cybersecurity attacks. These are different to the kinds of attacks that we've all become acclimatized to, in that they attack the supply chain of the software, the production mechanisms, not just the software itself. Our tools of production are under attack, with the build management systems, Circle CI, Team City, and most recently Jenkins, all being victims. This is an insidious, sophisticated form of attack that could have serious consequences for all of us. So what happened and what can we do about it? That's our topic for today. Hi, I'm Dave Farley of Continuous Delivery. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for watching. And if you haven't been here before, please do hit subscribe. And if you enjoy the content today, hit like as well. If you're a bad actor, a hacker, and you want to maximize the impact of your attacks, how could you do that? Well, one way would be to pollute things at source. This would give you, from the perspective of someone trying to do harm, lots of new ways to do bad things. If we can tinker with the means of production of software, it means that we can exploit things in powerful ways. This potential has not gone unnoticed by such bad actors. The appeal of attacks on the supply chain of software production is pretty obvious. Access at this point allows several categories of attack that would be otherwise next to impossible. In particular, opening the potential of compromising the security, not just of the organizations building the software, but by polluting the software that's being produced, and so the organizations that represent their customers and users too. Let me pause there and say thank you to our sponsors. We're extremely fortunate to be sponsored by Equal Experts and Transfic. Both of these companies are good friends of the channel and offer products and services that are very well aligned with the topics that we discuss here every week. So if you're looking for excellence in continuous delivery and in software engineering, please do click on the links in the description below and check them out. So back to our topic, what kinds of things can attackers do by exploiting routes like these into our systems? Well, the first and most obvious way that systems like these can be compromised is really the same as for any other infrastructural exploit. They may provide access to other connected internal systems. Deployment pipelines are often important integration hubs if, when you stop and think about it, joining all sorts of other kinds of systems together that are needed to support development, often including access to production systems too, since there has to be some route for deploying our systems into production, particularly if we want to practice continuous delivery. Once attackers have build time access to the servers that create our software and the ability to deploy and run arbitrary code there, all bets are off really. And this kind of access is really fundamentally in the nature of these kinds of build systems. Their job is to be able to build and deploy new versions of software. And so it's inevitable that they must have that capability. This has been a feature of at least two of the continuous delivery infrastructure exploits so far. With this kind of access, bad actors can do almost anything. So one route of attack is to use the privileged access that build servers often have and need as a route to compromising other services. In recent attacks, people's GitHub repositories were looted of credentials to make accessing other parts of the systems in the organization accessible, for example. Given that kind of level of access, it's easy then for bad actors to work to compromise dependencies of the system. One of the commonest forms of security breach in general is the result of using well-known exploits in common libraries and infrastructure to gain access to systems. In general, one of the security benefits of adopting continuous delivery that it allows us to keep our, soft, our infrastructure software up to date with security patches because we can change it more easily. This tends to close off, the, reduce the surface area at least, of known security exploits. However, what if your build system is changed to ignore critical security updates and so leave the resulting production systems that it built vulnerable on purpose? Now your deployment pipeline could be generating release candidates which were intentionally insecure and so wide open to attack. Once people have access to the dependencies that your software is built on or with, almost anything is possible, particularly if we can combine that with the next category of exploit, subverting security checks. 
And then if they have the ability to access the servers that the builds run on, they can access the version control systems that contain our source code and configurations, the repositories and build scripts that manage dependencies of our systems and the test environments that validate our changes. Then what's to stop them compromising the source of the system that's being built? Rewriting the code to infect customers and users' computers with malware or spyware or anything else. Attackers with access to the tools of production could change the software itself to include malicious code and then use the normal, often trusted delivery channels of the software to spread the malware to unsuspecting users, piggybacking their bad software on top of regular trusted software products. Clearly all this is the stuff of nightmares. So far, Circle CI, JetBrains, Team City, and most recently Jet Jenkins have all been compromised. This is a serious issue and a serious attack by sophisticated, allegedly, in some cases, state actors. Reports allege that some of these hacks are backed by Russian and North Korean security services. So what can we do? The first thing, and the reason that I'm making this video, I suppose, is that we can raise awareness that this threat exists and point out some of the risk that this new vector of attack may pose. None of this means that you shouldn't use any of these tools, though. These tools have been targeted because of where they sit in the software production process, not because they are particularly at fault. The threat is just as real for any similar tools, really. It is their place in the software production chain that makes tools like these such a juicy target for the bad guys. As far as I can tell, the producers of all three of these tools that have been exploited so far have reacted appropriately and are trying to help to get fixes out and are working to keep their users informed. Circle CI is a software as a service product and so they've already updated their cloud hosted software to close any loopholes that they're aware of. If you run either Jenkins or Team City though, please do make sure that the version that you are using is up to date or recently patched. I've included links to the latest security advice that I can find on these exploits from JetBrains and the Jenkins teams in the description to this video. I think that there are the important thing here though is to be aware that this risk exists and think about what this means for you, the, your software in your context. I am no security expert. I strongly recommend that whatever build management tools that you use for your deployment pipelines, you should read the security advice from the producers and follow it. By default, treat build systems and servers as risky environments and put them behind firewalls and control access as far as you sensibly can. Leave only the ports that are essential to your build systems to do their job open and lock everything else down. Limit access. Keep infrastructure code, including things like Jenkins plugins, up to date and limit and control access, particularly admin access. Don't allow open access to internal repos and build systems. Put access control into place. For Jenkins in particular, their advice is to deny the ability to run code on the controller node. In their words, running builds on the controller node is extremely risky and should be disabled. The risks of these kinds of attack are very real and are being taken very seriously by some pretty serious players around the world. Organisation of all kinds are at potential risk if their software is not up to date. Already there are reports of attacks on energy trade associations, software companies offering software systems for billing, medical devices, customer care, employee monitoring, financial management, marketing and sales, as well as video games and hosting and IT companies, both large and small. So no one is really immune here. We're all potential targets. So please do think about your exposure to attacks like these. And if you're using one of these three products that I've mentioned, please do check which versions you are running and check back with them for their latest advice. Get them up to date. And if you're using something else, do check the advice from those suppliers too. Thank you for watching. If you enjoy the content on the Continuous Delivery channel, please do think about supporting us. You can, you can do that by joining our Patreon community, and there are many benefits of that. Please do check us out, and thank you for our existing patrons for your support. It's much appreciated. Thank you.